Welcome to the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business Podcast. I'm Melissa Lieberman, a fellow IC and business coach. On this podcast, I teach you to become a consistently booked independent consultant without becoming a pushy salesperson or working 24 seven. If I can do it, you can too. Listen on to find out how. Welcome to this week's episode. We're on episode number 132. So happy you're here today. And I'm excited to introduce today's topic, which is the path to $1 million in your independent consulting business. So we're talking about a million dollars in a 12 month period. I'm excited to share this with you because for a lot of us, we feel like this is a really a stretch goal or maybe not a possible, or even it's just not something we even want to attempt because it feels like it would be too much work. It would compromise our work-life balance goals. It would require us to create some business model where we're managing a lot of people and we don't want to do that. And I am here today to tell you that you can have a path to a million dollars in your consulting business without those things, without overworking, without compromising your work-life balance, and without growing a huge team to accomplish this. So that's what we're going to dive into. But before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about what inspired this. And hopefully this will be a great story to set us up for the focus of today's episode. And that is something very seemingly unrelated, but I'll show you how it's related here in a second. And that is, I'll share with you, I have started the process of writing a book. I started this week. And in order to do this, I hired a book coach because when you start something new or you have another goal, that is what I found to be the path to success. So I'm a coach and I believe in coaching. And that was the first thing I did. Hired a coach and she's also a hybrid publisher I believe it's also called indie publishing. This is all a new world to me. So I'm just learning it as I go here. But I share that with you because I've just started this process is a step by step process. I'm on step one, or maybe step zero at this point, I don't know. But the point is, as I've been thinking about it, even over the last week, you know, I was fitting in the homework that she gave me sort of in pieces and parts here and there. But I realized that I was thinking about myself in a backwards way. I was thinking about myself as, you know, as soon as the book gets published, which I think will be Q1 of next year, as soon as the book gets published, then I'll be an author. And I realized as I teach my clients, we're always the last one, I think, to apply things to ourselves, right? (laughs) I know these things, but I did not think of it myself. And here's what I realized. I realized that in order to get this book written and to be in love with the content that I will be writing and to get it done on time at a high quality and high level that I expect out of myself, I have to think about myself as an author right now. I can't think about myself as I'm going to be an author when it gets published in Q1. I have to think about myself, I am an author. And here's why that's the case. If I think of myself as I am an author, then automatically it clicked for me in my head. If I am an author, if I'm thinking about myself as an author, then I'm setting aside an hour every morning to write. If I'm an author, I write every day. If I'm becoming an author or trying to be an author or will be an author, then I'm kind of fitting things in, you know, a little bit while my kids are swimming at 6pm. It's not so intentional. It's not the best time of the day for my brain to work. It's just kind of going through the motions and the checking the box, doing these assignments that this editor slash coach has given me. And then the quality is going to be so much less. And ultimately, I'm not really producing something that in my mind is book worthy, right? So it just dawned on me, oh, right, this is what I teach my clients. I need to think of myself as an author, so that I act as an author, I set aside that highest value time every single morning, even if it's to write a paragraph, whatever it is, 
to be consistent every single day, thinking of myself as an author, solving writer's block. I'm sure I'll get that from the headspace of being an author versus I don't know what I'm doing. And approaching this project as if I'm an author, essentially ahead of time, giving myself credit that I am an author. And this is how I operate in order to get that highest quality result out of myself. And I share this story with you today, because this is a parallel to what we're going to be diving into your path to a million dollars. And not to spoil the whole thing, which I won't, But to give you a little taste of why it's a parallel, if you're thinking of yourself as a million dollar business owner, you're going to approach your business so much differently than if you're thinking of yourself as the 200k uh, consultant or the 500k consultant or the brand new consultant and approaching your business and the business model you're creating and the goals you're setting, everything will be different. If you are thinking of yourself as a million dollar business owner, as compared to a new business owner or a fill in the blank, whatever revenue number you're at right now. So that's what I'm so excited to dive into this topic with you today. This is just one component of the steps to or the path to $1 million. But it's one of the most important components, which is the way you're thinking about yourself. And I thought it was such great timing to share with you in the real time this specific example that I'm going through, and hopefully you can relate to it as you're thinking about whatever your goal is in your business. Okay, so with that, before we dive into today's episode, let's first start off with the agenda. We're going to work on this path to a million dollars in your independent consulting business. And I will say more specifically, it's the path for you to create a hundred, I'm sorry, $1 million in revenue without having to overwork yourself or compromise your work-life balance. So that's an important piece of the puzzle here. You could probably hit a million dollars if you were working 20 hours a week or whatever it is. We don't want that. We want a sustainable path to $1 million. So that's what we're focused on today. We're going to start off with, first, I'll give you a very specific example. So a lot of times it feels very uh, vague. I want to make a million dollars, but you don't even know how that would work. So I'm going to give you a very specific example of how that could work with some very simple math. And then we'll dive into those five steps to create your million dollar consultancy. And then I'll pull it all together by recapping those steps for you. Okay, before we get into step one, which is the math of it all, I want to make sure that you're aware of uh, two resources I want to share with you today. The first is a new assessment that I've created specific for independent consultants. It's really important and related to today's topic, which is about personal branding. If you're able to create a million dollar personal brand, it will grease the skids for you to get there. And so go out over to uh, consultingbrand.me. We'll put the link in the show notes, but it's consultingbrand.me is the URL it will take you to that assessment. You'll answer 15 or so questions, maybe 14, 14 questions, and then it will give you an assessment. It will grade you on four different categories of personal branding, and it will give you an action plan depending on where your answers are so that you can start up-leveling your personal brand and setting yourself up to be uh, more known for and sought after what you do and ultimately make it easier to this path to a million or whatever your goal is. And then the second resource, if you haven't done it yet, taken the assessment, or it's been a while, I also recommend you take the independent consultants growth assessment. And that will give you a really good holistic look at your business and where your areas of opportunity are in terms of setting yourself up to grow in a sustainable way. So you can find that at icscorecard.com. So it's the two letters, IC for independent consultant.com. Okay, so now that you've got those companion resources, let's start off with very simple math. I want to illustrate for you how a million dollar consultancy is possible without you having a team. You might have a bookkeeper or maybe an administrative assistant or something like that but you don't have to have a team of subcontractors 
to get to the point of a million dollars. So I'm just going to give you a very simple, simple math example. And that is you could sign four retainer clients who are paying you 22K per month. And that gets you past the $1 million mark. And for those retainer clients, you're doing advisory type work. You might be spending, you know, five hours ish a week on each one of them, maybe 10, depending on the week, but five, five to 10 hours a week on each one. Some might take heavier lifting one week, some might take heavier lifting in another but it can average out to 30-ish hours a week and that still leaves you time to work on your business. Now, I'm not saying that this is easy, but I am saying this is very possible and I've seen it in real life in action with clients that I've worked with. So it's not something I made up. It is a real life business model and is possible for you too. There is a path to get there and that's what I'll share with you today. We'll put a couple of other examples in the show notes to give you some more examples that don't rely on such a simple business model that are a little bit more tricky to explain verbally, but I'll put we'll put those in the show notes as well. So you can see what a mix of services would look like in order to hit and exceed that million dollar mark. Again, the goal here is setting up a business model that where you're making the money you want to make that feels you know, really impactful for you and your family without overworking, where you're not having to choose between making money and your work-life balance. And the key ingredient here is following these five steps that I'm going to give you here in a minute. This might be a stretch for you as you're listening, or it might not feel like a stretch, but either way, this is not out of the realm of possibility for you. And that's what's so important to start off with, to say to yourself, you know what, it is possible for me to get to a million dollars. Now, what am I going to do to make that happen without compromising my work-life balance? What a great question to ask yourself as a business owner. Okay, so now let's start diving into these five steps, the path to a million dollars. This is where the dovetailing of my story that I started off with comes into play. And that is you want to get yourself into the headspace of being a $1 million business owner. Think about this. If you're running your business, if you're working on your pipeline, if you're selling your work from the headspace of I make 200 k per year, you're going to show up so differently. You're going to interact so differently. You're going to approach such different types of clients, such different nature of work, than you are if you are thinking about yourself as the $1 million business owner. Just like I shared with you, if I'm thinking about myself as someone who's learning how to write a book, I'm treating that almost like a a classroom assignment. Oh, let me just fit it in, you know, here and there, like I shared with you while I'm at swim practice, you know, while my kids are at swim practice, let me be clear, versus I'm an author. That when I think about myself as an author, every single morning, I'm setting aside an hour to write. Uh, That's my priority. And it's the same thing for you. Whatever result you want to create in your business, today we're talking about that million dollar goal when you want to create a million dollars in your business, you've got to get into the headspace of that million dollar business owner. Here's a tip that I'll share with you too. Especially in this case, you may even want to think about yourself as the $3 million business owner, just to give yourself some distance between where you're at right now. You might be at 250, you might be at 750, wherever you are, kind of stretch yourself way out there. If 1 million feels way out there, then go with that. If 3 million feels way out there, go with that. That gives you some distance to help you think differently about what you're doing in your business, how you're acting in your business, what you're not doing in your business, how you want to shift your positioning. So wherever you're at, the first step to $1 million is to get yourself into a different headspace. Stretch yourself out to think about, okay, what would it look like when I have a million dollar business? What would I be offering? Who is my target market? What is my specialization? What is my niche in this industry as a consultant? What is my positioning and my messaging to acquire the ideal type of client I want to be working with? 
how am I thinking about myself when I'm making a million dollars in my consultancy, which is, you know, plus or minus 100k per month? How am I thinking about myself? How am I thinking about myself as a consultant who delivers the work? How am I thinking about myself as the business owner? How am I thinking about myself as the chief financial officer? How am I thinking about myself as the chief revenue officer? How am I thinking about myself as the COO? Going through all those different hats that you wear in your business and really being clear about what is it that you're thinking when you already have reached your goal so that you can shift your mindset into that version of you as a business owner ahead of time. How are you thinking about your clients? How are you thinking about the market? How are you thinking about the way you're generating leads or the way you're selling services or the way you're deciding which clients to put on your roster and which clients you're going to refer to some other consultant to do the work? How are you thinking about the results that your clients achieve? How are you thinking about the outcomes that you deliver to your clients? How are you thinking about money in general? Sometimes I hear from consultants, I don't need that much money. And you might not quote unquote need that much money. Most of us don't need a million dollars. But when you're thinking I don't need a million dollars, then of course you'll never create a million dollars versus you know what? I have a goal to create a million dollars and then I get to decide what to do with it. Maybe I wanna donate half of it. Whatever the reason is for you to create this million dollars, you want to be very clear and paint this picture. Go answer these questions I just gave you. We'll put them in the show notes. I just rattled off a bunch of them very quickly. So we'll put them in the show notes so that you don't have to go back and transcribe them. Step one in your path to a million dollar consultancy, get yourself into the headspace of a million dollar business owner. And that's not just one time, that is repeatedly over and over again. Think about the example I just gave you about me being an author. If I sit down and I'm really excited and I answer those some of those types of questions for myself, I'll get really excited and inspired and, you know, really think like and take action as if I were an author. And then it wears off because I don't have a book yet. It wears off, right? That's not how I currently think of myself. I would have already written a book if I was already thinking about myself that way on autopilot. It's the same thing for you. If you were thinking of yourself as a million dollar business owner, you would already be creating a million dollars in your business. You're not there yet. And so it requires repetition. It requires you to do this purposefully every single day. I will tell you, if I had to choose one activity, one routine as a business owner that I needed to do every day, If I had to choose between lead generation and spending 15 minutes working on my business owner mindset, I would spend the 15 minutes working on my business owner mindset because then I know for sure that I would be so much more productive on my lead generation activities or whatever else is required. So that's why I started with this as step one, because it is the fuel for everything we're about to talk in the next four steps. So Step number one, get yourself into the headspace of a million dollar business owner and do it often. Step number two, define your business model. So this is the math of it. What service mix are you going to offer? I gave you a very, very simple one here verbally. There are more in the show notes to give you ideas of what this service mix might look like. The link to the show notes is in the description of this episode. So it's easy to get to. But ask yourself, what would I need to offer? It's very simple math. What would I need to offer? How much would I charge for it? How many of those things would I do in the course of one year? And as a double check test, could I physically fit all of that work in in the course of a year without compromising my work-life balance? That's the math of your business model. So that's your service mix. And then you're going to want to ask yourself what your business development formula is. What kinds of business development activities would you need to do in order to generate the leads required for you to land that type of work at your approximated close rate percentage? So you might need, for example, to create a pipeline of $2 million 
at a 50% close rate? How would you create a pipeline of $2 million? You might be thinking to yourself, you know, a million felt like a stretch. Now you're telling me to build 2 million. Again, go back to step one, if that's the case, which it may be not a problem. Go back to step one and get yourself into the headspace of the business owner who has already created a million dollars in revenue in a 12-month period without sacrificing your work-life balance. And then figure out how would you create a $2 million pipeline? Step three, figure out your go-to-market strategy. You know, easy math, you need a $2 million pipeline to hit a million dollars in revenue. How are you going to create that? What is your go-to-market strategy? Write that down. Get really clear about it. Create a hypothesis for yourself. Don't stop here and tell me it's hard or it's out of your reach or you're not sure if this is something you even want to do. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself, what would it take from a go-to-market strategy perspective for me to create a pipeline of $2 million so that I could generate $1 million in revenue without overworking or compromising my work-life balance? For example, with your go-to-market strategy, how would you establish your reputation with ideal buyers and collaborators so those ideal clients are coming to you, you're sought after for what you do? What does your business model and your go-to-market strategy need to look like? Answering these questions from that headspace of already having created a million dollars. Okay, that was step three, define your go-to-market strategy. Step number four, identify and address your blockers. Again, the reason why you don't have a million dollar consultancy right now, if you don't, is because you haven't been thinking like a million dollar consultancy business owner. There are blockers in your way right now with the way you're thinking. You have probably have some form of a ceiling, right? We all feel comfortable. A lot of times, the comfort level that we have created for ourselves is whatever amount of money you made in corporate. So you might have made 250k in corporate, you end up repeating that in some form or fashion in your consultancy, you might have made 800k in corporate, including bonuses or that kind of thing. Likely, you'll figure out a way to recreate that in some way, maybe overworking included, but in some way in your consultancy. That's because we have a natural set point. We have a natural set point of what we're comfortable with or what we've created in the past. Whether you're brand new to consulting or you've been consulting for a while and repeating the same results over and over again, the thing that you've got to do in either case is change your set point. And the way to change your set point is, let's go back to step one, <laughs> think like a business owner, and then also work on step four, which is really getting clear about what your blockers are. Identify and uncover and address those blockers. The blockers fall under the general categories of what you think about yourself. For example, do you think you're capable of creating a million dollars in a sustainable way? Do you think you're capable of creating a million dollars without building a large team? Do you think you're capable of, of generating a million dollars while at the same time protecting your work-life balance? Ask yourself, how strongly do you believe in that, in those things? Some days it might be a nine on a scale of 10. Other days it might be a two. That's not a problem. Your belief in whether you're capable of doing this will waver, but you want to get really good and precise at knowing where those doubts are and redirecting them. This is the type of work that I do with clients so often. There's a reason why you haven't hit your goals yet. And oftentimes it comes down to these blockers, also known as, you know, that natural set point or limiting beliefs. Another category of blockers you want to be looking at is what you think about the market. What do you think about the willingness of your clients to pay the rates you plan to be charging in order to hit your goal? What do you think about the value that you're offering to your potential clients and the way these perceive the value? Ask yourself these questions to get really clear about what your blockers are. And we'll put this whole formula in the show notes along with those questions that go in step four as well. So to recap, step four is identify 
and address your blockers so that you can overcome them and that you can raise that natural set point for yourself. And it comes down to what you think about yourself, what you think about your clients, what you think your clients think about you, what you think about money, what you think about value, and getting really clear about those things so that you can rebuild them from that $1 million identity, from that $1 million thought process versus from where you're at right now. And then finally, step five is for you to consistently work this plan until you reach it. But here's what that looks like. You might set a goal to say, my goal for my business is to make a million dollars in the next 12 months. And you might go through steps one through four, get really clear about your business owner mindset, get really clear about your business model, get really clear about your go-to-market strategy, understand what your blockers are so that you can redirect them. That is a repeated process over and over again. As I was mentioning earlier, you want to set aside the time every single day. It could be five minutes. It could be 15 minutes to really focus in on how will I be the $1 million business owner today? What is my business owner mindset look like today? How might I approach things differently than I would have otherwise coming at it from a million dollar business owner mindset versus a, you know, wherever you're at dollar mindset? really get clear and operationalize this until you get the result. You want to be that $1 million business owner. You want to be that $1 million business version of you as often as you can and get really good at redirecting when you notice you're falling out of that headspace. You want to consistently reinforce what's possible for you. I had a client, we worked on her business model. We mapped out a plan for her that got her to three, I think it was 3 million in the next three years. And it was very clear from her body language, how clear she felt about it, how doable it felt, how surprised she was that it was so much more simple than she had anticipated. Then we met the next week. And she was struggling with, you know, worrying about making 150k, like all had gone all the way back from This $3 million is inevitable to fear about making the lowest amount, 150 in in this case, right? It's this amnesia that we create. Amnesia is so common because our brain, again, is directed all toward that set point. And so you want to have a repetitive process that you put in place to constantly remind yourself and reinforce yourself, who are you being How are you thinking? How are you acting? How are you problem solving as the $1 million business owner and reinforcing that and knowing that there will be amnesia moments and that's not a problem. No, having a process to overcome those so that you continuously move forward to the point where that $1 million becomes an autopilot, a natural way of thinking for you. The last thing that I'll share with you with respect to this step number five, which is operationalizing this path, those first four steps that I gave you, set your sights on generating a million dollars in a year without compromising your work-life balance. And let's say that you get to month number 10 or month number 11, and you're not close. Don't start over. This first path to a million Go make it happen. See how long it takes you. It might take you 18 months. It might take you 24 months. That's not a problem. What you want to do after you've hit the million dollar mark is now ask yourself the question, how could I do that? I'm going to do this again. How might I do it in a more compressed time frame? I did it in 24 months this time. Now I'm going to figure out how to do it in 12 I'm going to go at that goal again, but I'm just going to do it more quickly than I did before. So don't give up if it's not going exactly the way that you are imagining it. If you continuously repeat these steps, these five steps that I gave you, you will get to a million dollars in a 12-month period without compromising your work-life balance. So as we recap today, I want to repeat these five steps for you. Number one, get yourself into the headspace of a million dollar business owner. Number two, define your business model. Get really clear on the math. Number three, define your go-to-market strategy. How are you going to build that pipeline that supports the million dollar 
path, the business model that you just built out. Step number four, identify and address those blockers. And then step number five is to continuously repeat and get yourself into that headspace of a million dollar business owner as often as you can until it becomes natural and on autopilot. And you've addressed those blockers and it doesn't even feel like a different person anymore. You're the business owner who just consistently creates a million dollars. There's no friction, there's no resistance, there's no doubt. It happens for you on autopilot. And that's how, as you're repeating that over and over again, that's how you achieve this goal. All right, my friend, thank you for tuning in today. I'm excited that you were here and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Thanks for joining me this week on the Grow Your Independent Consulting Business podcast. If you liked today's episode, I have three quick next steps for you. First, click subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to make sure you don't miss future episodes. Next, leave me a review in your podcast app so other independent consultants can find and benefit too. And finally, to put the ideas from today's episode into action, head over to melissalieberman.com for the show notes and more resources to help you grow your consulting practice from your first few projects into a full-fledged business. See you next week.